Jimmy Santiago McKinn. A photograph taken in March 1886 depicts a group of Apaches gathered around a temporary settlement, armed with bows and arrows, and appearing to pose for the camera. The camera was held by the infamous Western photographer C.S. Fly, who was regarded by many to be one of the first and finest photojournalists, and whose work still provides modern eyes with rare glimpses into life on the frontier. This photograph became his most famous, owing to the fact that it featured, in the foreground, a young white boy whose story is one of the Wild West's greatest. Jimmy McKinn was 11 years old in 1885, when one day his life was changed forever. On September 11th, Jimmy and his brother, 17-year-old Martin McKinn, spent the morning herding on their ranch in Galena Creek. Their father was in town for the day, buying agricultural supplies. As they took an early lunch break, Jimmy went down to the creek to play, while Martin stayed behind to read in the shade of a tree. Suddenly, Jimmy heard a gunshot ring out and returned to where he had left Martin. He was met with a horrific scene. Jimmy saw an Apache crush his brother with a rock, then strip the body of its shirt and coat. Jimmy attempted to flee the scene, but the Apache horse riders quickly captured him. By the time a search party found Martin's body, Jimmy was long gone. The Apache who had murdered Jimmy's brother was none other than the infamous Geronimo, a then 63-year-old Apache leader of legendary status, who was known both as a skilled medicine man and a vicious warrior. Geronimo's many raids and attacks had cost the U.S. military greatly. Geronimo interrogated Jimmy for details regarding the military presence in the area, but the boy was too traumatized to reply. Geronimo took pity on him and spared his life, effectively abducting him. Pursued by American cavalry because of their bloody raiding and pillaging, Geronimo and his people took Jimmy with them as they fled into the Mogollon Mountains, an area that was described as a natural fortress. The following year, Geronimo's violent campaign ended when he and his people were forced to surrender formally. C.S. Fly was the only photographer to capture the surrendering Indians, and he discovered the young white boy amongst them. Initially, Jimmy refused to speak English and was very reluctant to leave the Apaches, who had apparently treated him well. Ultimately, Jimmy was collected from New Mexico by his parents, wearing only underwear. They outfitted him at a local store and took him home. Jimmy had fully assimilated into the Apache way of life and strongly resisted being taken from the Apache camp, preferring to remain amongst his captors rather than return to his family. Jimmy had acquired the nickname Santiago and retained it for the rest of his life. The Girl with the Mojave Tattoo One photograph which received particular media attention in the era of the Wild West was that of Olive Oatman, an American woman with distinctive tribal chin tattoos. The Oatman family had been traveling from Illinois to California in 1851 on a train containing around 90 passengers, most of whom were bound for a Mormon gathering when a small Native American tribe attacked them. The attack was a vicious one. The natives killed most of 16-year-old Olive's family, leaving her brother Lorenzo seriously injured. Both Olive and her 10-year-old sister Marianne were abducted and forced to work for the tribe. The two girls remained captives of the tribe for a year, used primarily for tasks such as carrying firewood and foraging for food. If they failed to comply, they were met with violent beatings. After a year, they were traded with the Mojave people for two horses. It was in the possession of the Mojave that Olive spent four years, which were, by her own account, much more pleasant. Meanwhile, Lorenzo had recovered from the attack. He employed the government's help in searching for his sisters, whom he firmly believed to still be alive. The Mojave treated the girls compassionately, and the tribal leader even treated them as his own children. They were even given new clothes and plots of land to cultivate. During this time, both received facial tattoos, a custom typically reserved for members of the tribe, suggesting that they had become entirely integrated and accepted. However, Marianne died of starvation following a drought that hit the Mojave land in 1855 and 1856. After word finally spread of a 19-year-old white woman living with natives, settlers demanded that she be returned. Although she initially hid, the Mojaves feared conflict, and they ultimately escorted Olive to the nearest town. Later in life, Olive told her story, as did the press, who sensationalized it. Because of this, solid facts are scarce. But Olive successfully became repatriated into American society, 
receiving significant attention and publicity. Olive lived a full life, the subject of many writings, and became known for her facial tattoos. She married, had children, and remains the first known white woman with a native tattoo. The Mask of Brazen Bill Brazelton Amongst the more sinister photos that survived the Old West is that of Brazen Bill, a successful robber of stagecoaches, known fraudster and infamous outlaw. The specifics of Brazen Bill's life are shrouded in mystery, but he's believed to have been born as William Whitney Brazelton and became orphaned at an early age. Bill allegedly turned to crime while young, and it is said that he killed a man at the age of 15. He is then believed to have made his way to New Mexico, where he killed a group of seven men. Bill was an artful con man. Once, in 1876, he cheated an audience out of a substantial amount of money after claiming he would eat the wheel of a wagon on stage. After collecting the audience's fees, he left to round up the rest of his troop and never returned. Brazen Bill was feared amongst stagecoach drivers, and he was known for the gauze mask that he wore to conceal his identity while committing crimes. It featured roughly cut eye holes and a red mouth opening. He typically worked alone and is known to have carried out dozens of gunpoint robberies this way. His escapades saw him collect cash, gold, and personal items from the passengers and the cargo of the coaches. However, his good fortune would eventually run out. A Pima County Sheriff named Charles A. Chabelle was told of a horse that had been used by Brazen Bill and traced to an accomplice of his, David Nimitz. Nimitz agreed to assist the sheriff and his five-man posse in bringing Bill to justice. A conflict occurred south of Tucson on August 22, 1878, between Bill and the sheriff. Despite being heavily armed, Bill was outnumbered. He was shot and killed on that day. On Bill's person were found two cartridge belts, a rifle, stolen gold and jewelry, and his infamous mask. Once Bill was brought in, officials put the mask on his body for the haunting photograph to be taken, then removed the mask and photographed him a second time. Big Nose George Even in the context of the Wild West, the story of Big Nose George is a particularly horrific one. After his demise, a section of George's skull was turned into an ashtray, and his skin was fashioned into a pair of shoes. George had been a cattle rustler and highwayman in the mid to late 19th century. He had been born in France, but spent most of his time in the American West. After a failed train robbery in 1878, George's gang murdered two local officers, which caused a substantial price to be put on their heads. The $10,000 reward was eventually doubled. The gang carried out a spate of robberies, amassing a significant amount of money. One particularly daring daylight robbery saw the gang don masks and ambush a large convoy of official military vehicles as it passed through a canyon. According to various sources, they surprised the convoy, captured the soldiers, and made away with between $3,000 and $14,000. When, in 1880, George and his companion, Dutch Charlie, drunkenly bragged about killing two lawmen in Wyoming, locals realized that these men had a price on their heads. Two local deputies arrested the pair, and George was sent back to Wyoming to face trial. He was sentenced to hang in April 1881. He made a failed attempt to escape from jail, prying his chains off and using them to attack a jailer whose wife wielded a pistol and persuaded George to return to his cell. Provoked by this, a mob ultimately dragged George out of his cell and lynched him publicly. His brain was studied for clues regarding his criminality, with the top of his skull being sawn off. The cap was given to a 16-year-old female intern, who was said to have been the first to use it for an ashtray. The skin was sent to a tannery, which was made into a medical bag and a pair of shoes for the doctor examining George's body. In 1950, when construction workers discovered a whiskey barrel containing the bones of a man whose skull cap had been sawn off, the cap was tracked down and paired with the rest of the skull. It was a perfect fit. This was the body of Big News George. The morbid memorabilia remains on display in an Omaha museum to this day. Apache Spirit Dancers Some of the rarest photographs of the Old West depict Apache cultures and rituals, many of which were seldom seen by Western eyes. Amongst the many details revealed by some of these photographs are the ceremonial dances used by the Apache people to summon reigns, crown new leaders, and mark important rites of passage. One such dance is the Spirit Dance, also known as the Ghost Dance, in which dancers embody five different deities, one of whom is a clown-like figure. 
The five gods each have a specific role to play in the dance, as they chant and channel their powers while wearing costumes of deerskin masks and tall, painted headdresses. The dancers also carry sticks painted to represent lightning, drumming as they circle a clearing with trees at the center and their fellow Apaches arranged in a circle around the edge. Through gestures that are believed to symbolize the casting away of evil, the spirit dance is said to expel dangerous spirits from all in attendance while protecting the community from disease and enemies. The dance is also sometimes used to mark a woman's coming of age. She becomes involved with the dance, following the clown-like god figure before her face is painted with pollen. The following stage of the trance-like dance incorporates everyone, with the men and women separating and coming back together over 12 different songs. The godlike figures then encircle the fire, passing their symbolic lightning bolts through the flames to cleanse them of evil. The end of the Wild West saw many customs, such as the spirit dance, lost to history. However, the spirit dance is still performed, and with the help of early spirit dancer photographs taken by visitors to the Apache people in the Old West, the authenticity of this tradition can be confirmed. Which of these stunning historic photographs do you think is the most haunting? Comment below and let me know what other grim parts of history you want me to explore. Thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.